The third century AD saw the shattering of the Roman Empire. After the murder of Emperor Severus Alexander in 235, the leadership of Rome fell into utter disarray. This instability would begin to crack the foundation of the empire's strength, and these cracks would soon sever Rome's lands into two, three, and four parts. This would eventually evolve into the two halves we recognize today, the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire, known more commonly as the Byzantine Empire. While the western portion was on a rapid decline during the 4th and early 5th centuries, the east was doing alright. Thus, when the western Roman Empire completely collapsed before the start of the 6th century, a burning question quickly rose. Would the Byzantines attempt to reclaim the fallen half of the once united empire? At first, no. But the succession of Justinian I to the throne in Byzantium would suddenly change that answer. Justinian I, later known as Justinian the Great, became the Byzantine Emperor in 527. His reign would be marked by his effort of Renovatio Imperii, or Restoration of the Empire. And this began with the invasion of Rome's former holdings in North Africa. In 530, Justinian's ally and Vandal King Hilderic was overthrown and put in jail by his power-hungry cousin Gelimer. Hilderic reached out to the Byzantines for help, and three years later, Justinian decided to take advantage of the situation. In 533, he sent one of his best commanders, who would later become known as one of history's most remarkable men of war, Belisarius. Sailing to the African coast with roughly 15,000 men, Belisarius had one goal, and that was to defeat the Vandals and take as many former Roman lands as humanly possible. And he did just that. The Vandals were downright blindsided by the invasion, and the Byzantines routed their defenders with relative ease. Carthage, the Vandal Kingdom's capital, was captured by Belisarius and his men in short order. King Gelimer surrendered the following spring, and even the western territories of Corsica and Sardinia fell back into Roman hands. Running on the high of this early success, Justinian turned next to the literal west. Belisarius was ready to launch a new campaign, this time in Italy, on the behalf of the Eastern Empire. Thus, he next sailed to Sicily, which was rapidly retaken by the Byzantines, in part due to the citizens' general inclination in favor of the remains of their former Roman overlords. This prompted the contemporary Ostrogoth ruler to send word to Justinian, hoping to broker a deal in Sicily so he could maintain some level of overlordship. Instead, the Byzantines pushed forward militarily. East Roman general Mundus charged into Dalmatia in 536, while Belisarius moved deeper into Italy. Over in Dalmatia, Mundus found some triumph but overall failed fatally, and was soon replaced on the campaign by another Byzantine commander, Constantinius. The latter was much more successful, and by summer had captured the whole of Dalmatia from the Goths. All the while, Belisarius was drawing closer and closer to Rome itself. As the famed Byzantine general and his men marched through Italy, they seized and sacked city after city, beginning with Regium. By the time Belisarius reached Rome, its citizens had already heard of the plunder he and his men had caused in the surrounding cities, and thus wasted no time in trying to resist the invaders' efforts. By December, Belisarius had taken Rome. By now, King Theodahad had been ousted for failing to prevent the startlingly rapid advance of the Byzantines. Vitigis would be his successor, and quickly put a plan into motion to fight back against their attackers, but repelling the Romans would be far from easy. Nevertheless, Vitigis eventually marched on Rome with his gathered force to confront the occupying Byzantines, who had remained within the city. Upon arrival, the Goths laid siege to the city beginning in the spring of 537. The siege would last for a brutal year, 
only ending the following spring after reinforcements from Constantinople helped by capturing more surrounding towns and cutting the Goths off from their own reinforcements and supplies via the sea. As the situation around Rome worsened for the Goths, Vitigis began to debate whether remaining around the empire's former capital was worth the consequences. Eventually, in March in 538, he called off the siege and looked instead to Arminum. The Romans already had an occupying force in Arminum, but were running low in supplies, meaning that even if they had the manpower to withstand a Gothic siege, they may not actually be able to survive it. Subsequently, Belisarius met with a new batch of reinforcements, led by the Arminum commander by the name of Narsus. The latter pressed for support to be sent to Arminum, but Belisarius wasn't sold until their counterpart in the city sent a letter essentially begging for assistance. Now in agreement, Belisarius and Narsus divided their forces in three and marched off to surround the Ostrogoth forces under Vitigis. When he heard word of the nearing Byzantine troops, the exacerbated Gothic ruler realized that he would once again need to withdraw, and thus retreated this time to Ravenna. In the following weeks, the three generals, Belisarius, Narsus, and John, continued to take more Italian cities from Aemilia to Urbanum. From there, though, disputes between the various Roman commanders caused disastrous indecision, which would allow the Goths to seize Mediolanum back from the Byzantine troops under Mundilus. The city was not only taken but plundered, and the civilians massacred despite attempts by the Romans to broker a peace deal that would protect them. This was a wake-up call for the Byzantine authority, and the chain of command issue was swiftly rectified, giving full control back to Belisarius as attentions shifted over to Ravenna. Before Belisarius could capture yet another city, however, a massive wrench was thrown into both armies' plans. As the Roman generals were scattered, attempting to seize a handful of territories simultaneously, King Theodebert I of Austrasia suddenly entered the scene at the head of a daunting Frankish army. Both the Byzantines and Goths assumed that these would be allies of the latter, which meant everyone was caught off guard when they ambushed the Goths on the bank of the Po River. The stunned forces under Vitigis were humiliatingly defeated, and the Romans on the other bank were left in utter shock. Attempting to defeat the new invader then and there, the Byzantines were also routed and forced to retreat toward Tuscany. In yet another jaw-dropper, however, the Franks were next vanished, not by any army or fourth invader, but by a brutal outbreak of dysentery. Following the entire fiasco, the Byzantines finally felt ready to regroup and march on Ravenna. As Belisarius prepared to lay siege, an embassy from Emperor Justinian himself arrived in Ravenna with a hard-to-ignore offer for the Goths. The embassy proposed that if the Ostrogoths gave in now, the Byzantines would partition Italy and share control of the region. If there had been fine print, it would have ended with, so that way we can focus on our war with the Persians. The reality was that Justinian, as determined as he was to rebuild the Western Roman Empire, was concerned about the Persian threat inching nearer and hopes to wrap up conflict with the Goths. Belisarius, on the other hand, was infuriated by this strategy. So close to taking the Ostrogoth capital, he refused to back down. Many of his men agreed with the Emperor, and the Goths, too, were quick to accept the terms. But Belisarius just wouldn't give in. That is, at least, until the Ostrogoths offered a counter-deal, promising to make the renowned commander the new ruler of the Western Empire. In the end, he still took the city in the name of the Byzantine Empire and returned back to Constantinople for what should have been a hero's welcome. But instead, he was met with significant distrust from Emperor Justinian. Nevertheless, with immense credit being owed to Belisarius, the Byzantines had more or less recaptured the Western Roman Empire. Unfortunately for the legacy of the Romans, this triumph, even if Justinian wouldn't call it that, 
didn't last for very long. Too preoccupied elsewhere, the Byzantines failed to establish any kind of strong or reliable authority in the newly conquered territories. And with the Ostrogoths feeling betrayed by Belisarius, this was a rookie mistake. It wouldn't take long for the Goths to begin regaining their lost cities. And even when Belisarius returns to counteract this, sabotage from his own leadership made it impossible to secure the previously conquered territories. The back and forth would continue into the 550s until the Byzantines did eventually retake the Italian holdings in what is often described as a Pyrrhic War. But this would only last now, until the Lombards decided to take Italy all for their own.